Okay, this is actually going to be a really fun live stream. So, the decline of the of the musical instrument is the uh, is the title of today, but it actually stems from a conversation I had this morning with uh, Aaron and then Billy talking about this. <laughs> there's apps out there that actually will play chords for you the, that you can just drag the MIDI in and you can create your own chord progressions from them. Which I'm like. What? People pay for that? And they're like a hundred bucks just to play basic chord progressions and put the MIDI notes in. I'm going to show you what that MIDI notes is. I'm going to open Pro Tools and show you what that is and everything. But I'm going to show you how you can take something like three pencils and actually learn how to play chords with them, right? So that's that's my that's my little trick that, that I that I uh, came up with. I said, I can, I can teach people to play chords with three pencils, okay? So here's the, this is the theory of this stuff and why it's so, uh, what made me think of this. There's a Dead Mouse, uh, uh, what is it called, Masterclass. And in the ad for it, you guys have seen it because they've played it. They used to play it all the time before my videos when they were pushing his Masterclass. And he talks about, he, there's one scene where he's like, I wish I knew how to play chords, it would be much faster. So he's dragging MIDI notes inside a DAW, Ableton or Pro Tools, whatever it is. And that's how he's creating his chord progressions. And this is how many people will actually create the backing tracks. They'll create everything that way through MIDI instead of playing things on actual instruments. Even instead of playing them on the keyboard, which is essentially the MIDI notes are coming from the keyboard but what they do they'll just type them in and then they'll move them around with a mouse which, which is actually incredibly slow learning how to play an instrument whether it's the piano or the guitar you're not going to get those things from dragging midi notes around you're just not and you actually miss out on the fun of it and that's ultimately what this is about if you're trying to create your own music you want to create the, the, the excitement of playing something, right? This is why I have made things to, that I sell that are things to help you learn how to play music, okay? The theory of it, meaning understand when I say, oh, a flat third to a third of a C major chord, flat third to, to a regular third, right? To a sus4, to a sus2. Or if I'm talking about add nine chord or a Lydian triad. Great sound, great sound. I just love that. Knowing what they sound like too, that's what ear training is for. When I hear those things, I'm like, oh, it's a one chord, that's a four chord, that's a six chord, that's a two chord. Oh, that's the five chord of the sus four. Oh, that's the flat third to third blues thing, right? Or it's the double that diminished chord up to the major chord. But I just hear it as the flat third, flat five, up to the natural third, natural fifth. You can use that. kind of blues and 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 uh, boogie woogie kind of things come in or from these just these little chromatic notes that uh color the chord progressions or color the chords that makes sense um and they make music more interesting i had mike dawes in who's a phenomenal guitar player came in he I don't, for those of you that watched the video um from this past week it reminded me when my mom bought me my first guitar, me and my brother, my Penco 12 string that was $120, which was like a month of my mom's salary working at the American Can Company. And she told me not to tell my dad. And her one request was, whenever I ask you to play, I want you to play. And what that meant was, and the same for my brother, he took my global acoustic guitar that my brother got for a dollar, and he was playing that, and I was playing the Penco 12 string. And, he, and my mom said, I'm happy to buy this for you. I totally believe in supporting your, you with music. But if my, you, your dad and I ask you guys to play, you need to play. And that means play songs, okay? This was a big thing in the Beato household. Every night after dinner, 
All my siblings would adjourn to the living room and my brother John and I would play songs, okay? Whatever they were, they would be pop songs, but they might, they wouldn't know these songs, right? So we had to play stuff where we'd play the melody. And I had Phil X in here a couple weeks ago and he was playing these uh, Greek folk songs that he learned as a kid. He played on bazooki. These are the kind of things you do, but we would play like Sweet Georgia Brown or things that my parents would know. There's a Jobim tune called Wave. That's an amazing tune. And I learned this song because it was my dad's favorite song. And we, we played the girl from Ipanema and stuff like that. He loved Bossa Novas. He loved Jobim. And my mom loved uh, Italian folk songs. So we would learn to play those things. Uh, come back to Sorrento, you know, whatever, whatever it was. And my brother John, we had a mandolin too that was my grandfather's that, that uh, my brother John would play or I would play. And we would play these folk songs. And that's the whole thing about playing an instrument is fun. And actually being able to sit and play songs for people is even more fun. So the idea when I, when, when Billy and Aaron were telling me about these cording apps that you just, you can grab a MIDI file, drag it in your DAW. It's like, why do you need to do that? Playing a chord, all you do is space your fingers about that far apart and you can play chord. chords are so simple. I mean, really, like, why do you even need that stuff? You just have to know what they are and then practice for a few. I mean, honestly, it's, it's, uh, I, you, a five-year-old can learn to play chords. I know I had my kids take piano lessons. It's incredibly simple. Go watch YouTube. You can watch little kids playing incredibly complex pieces. So it can be done with a little bit of practice, especially these types of things. Um, this is why this thing, let me go back to the Pro Tools thing here. This, um, let me put my glasses back on so I can actually see what I'm doing here. So Billy doesn't get mad and I don't hit the wrong thing here. Billy, am I doing okay here? Yep. Okay, so this is this Pro Tools thing. So I just set up a few basic chords here. Okay. Okay, so uh, let me turn this on here. I'll turn off the uh, click so it's not annoying. That's a C chord. It's A minor. G. That's back to C. Okay. So we've got, if you look at this, G, B, D. I don't know if you guys can see that here with this. I'm not sure how to blow up this, these MIDI notes bigger. Can you, does this work? There we go. Uh, so take this chord here, right? And basically what these guys do, you can take these things and go like this. So I just dragged that note. Oh, that's bad. Oh, oh, that's not a good note. Uh, oh, that's a good note. Uh, what about this? Ah, that's okay. What about this? Ah, that's not that good. And they're basically just dragging stuff around without having really any idea what they're doing. It's way faster to just learn the stuff yourself and just play it. The click track comes on, you play the basic chord changes, and then if you want to go in and change a note here or there, you can do that stuff. But in the amount of time it would take you to play something that has that has any type of uh, no notes that sustain along. It would take you like two hours to do something like that that has a couple suspensions in it to actually program that, that you could play in 10 seconds, right? So don't waste your time Actually, just take the time to learn this stuff. Mini controllers are so cheap. You can get little small ones that have 41 keys or even less, a couple octaves. These things are so simple to play, to learn major minor chords, and then experiment with the middle note of those. That's typically where your suspensions and things come in. If I take C major, if I add that note D, it becomes C add nine, or if I take that, Add that note, that becomes C major with a sharp four. Or I could just take that note and go there, C sus four, take the middle note, C sus two. It's typically the middle note is the one that's gonna move to create those colors. 
right? To create the, the kind of interesting chord progressions that you want to have. I can go. That, so that would be a way to get from C to G, C, C sus2, G, G7, or B diminish, then, or, or I'm sorry. Right? I'm just connecting those chords very, very simply by changing the top note and holding one note over, moving two of the notes, bringing that top note back down, moving the middle note, moving the other two notes around it. It's just like basically like putting together a puzzle. If you know what the notes are in a chord, it makes it incredibly simple to do that. And there's no need to drag MIDI notes at all as long as you can play with a click. And getting good at playing with a click track is just practice. So you can simply come up with your whole accompaniment and do this, right? How do you build the chords, though? There's a few things you got to memorize, okay? You got to know what a major scale is. You got to know what keys are, right? And the one thing that you do, uh, you can buy my book, buy my ear training course. That's one way you can do it because it has all the stuff written there. Discount code is 1031. This is my Halloween sale that I do every year. Halloween sale goes on for a couple weeks here, but you just need to memorize this. Be able to write a circle, make a clock, right? That's a clock. C, G, D, A, E, B, F sharp, G flat, then D flat, A flat, E flat, B flat, F. It's simple. That's a circle of fifths. You get zero sharps and flats, one sharp, two sharps, three sharps, four sharps, whoops, four sharps, five sharps, uh, six flats, uh, six sharps, five flats, four flats, three flats, two flats, one flat. Last thing you have to do is memorize the order of sharps and flats, right? What is the, what is the thing you do, Billy? What is the... the oh, fat cats go dead after eating burritos. Fat cats go dead after eating burritos. These are the order of sharps. So if you have, you know, two sharps in a key, it's going to be fat cats. If you have three, it's fat cats go Right, key of A is fat cats go, key of E is four sharps, that's a bad four. Fat cats go dead. And then what's the what's the other one? Bob Bob Evans ate donuts. Bob oh, Evans ate donuts. <laughs> what, what is it? Got crazy fat. Got got crazy fat. Okay. It's actually this order just backwards, right? So if something has three flats, it's it's E flat major. Well, you take the first three flats, Bob Evans, eight. Okay, if it's got one flat, it's just Bob, the B flat. And you just add that to the scale. You take an F, take the notes, um, key of F, there's your B flat. That's your F major scale. And then everything else. Once you memorize this simple chart here, which is literally in the beginning of my Beato book, boom. Discount code RB1031. The other part about buying things from my store, not only do you educate yourself and become better musicians, but it actually supports the channel. I've always supported my channel by selling educational things. I mean, that's, that's, that's always been the mission of my channel is to, um, is to actually teach people music and teach people to understand music and teach people to appreciate music. A lot of people get on me about um, when I do my top 10 Spotify countdowns that I don't say bad enough stuff about pop music, right? Rick, how do you like this? How do you like this? Not that I like it. You just have to, you have to know what's going on out there. What kind of music are people creating? What's it sound like? How's it, how's it put together? I think it's fascinating, personally, to see how culture has progressed since my time. Uh, when I did the Chicago breakdown of the song Make Me Smile, it's from 1970. When I was uh, eight years old, it came out. It was one of the first 45s I ever bought. Terry Kath, who was in the band, died in 1978. He's been dead for, you know, how many years? 40-some-odd years. It's amazing, right? Um, and that's the music of my youth. The music of my youth had things like horns in it. Well, 
how many horn bands are there now, really? Almost none. I don't count Snarky Puppy as a horn band, right? I'm talking about popular bands on the radio that use horns. Pretty much none. How many bands use orchestras on the radio nowadays? Eh, pretty much none. I did Kiss from a Rose, Seal, 1995. Wait, are there things that use orchestras on the radio, Billy? Well, not orchestras. Oh, they use real orchestras, I'm talking about. Like actual or <laughs> actual orchestras. And it wasn't that long ago that we used orchestras because I used orchestras and things that I produced. Green Day had orchestras and... Uh, like the or orchestral music and pop was only in the last 10 years that it kind of started to disappear. I'm sure there's examples out there and everything. I'm not saying that there's nothing, but very, very little. I was going to say for horns, Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars for horns. Okay, so there are some things. Uh, thank you, Billy. See, so Billy keeps me honest on here, but uh, I'll take those Chicago horn parts. Those are pretty amazing ones from Make Me Smile. Check out my video if you haven't done it. Discount code for today's live stream is 1031. Like I said, you want to support the channel, that's how you do it. Or if you want to donate, just make a donation to the channel, keep things going. There's a donate, thing, uh, donate link right in the description. And you can always, always become a member of the Beato Club. Thanks so much for watching and spending your Saturday here with me. This has been really fun. I like having the kind of multimedia stuff with Pro Tools. A lot of people don't get to see these things. There's Pro Tools, Ableton, Logic. So many great DAWs out there. Reaper. Uh, you guys are awesome. Have a great rest of your weekend. We'll see you.